prediction. Does this work, Shane? It works. I think it's. I think the weather's getting my allergies. Or I got a cold. I don't fucking know. Hmm. I drank one yesterday before I did my workout. Half of one. This is delicious. The best flavor we have. Shark Bite's the best one. I've been. I've been going back. It's whatever oh. one I'm drinking at the time is my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> I. I'm. I think Shark Bite and Glacier are it. I think they're it. I like the the. Put it this way: the cherry icy is the one that I would grab on a road trip mm. with my pretzels. Yeah. Because I like I'd like the the pretzels, like regular pretzels, not flavored pretzels, with the cherry icy. That'd be my shit on a road trip. Yeah. I this is just the best orange I've ever had. The number one for me. Yeah. The number one. Mm. Good morning, huh? Yeah. Yeah, very good morning. Feels good to be on the podcast. It does. Back here sitting here. We got a lot to talk about. You got a lot going on in your life right now. <sighs> I got a lot going on in my life right now. Fucking mayhem. Shane's got a lot going on in his life right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shane's like, I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't. I'm just going to hurt say my name. So I'm going to say yes. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Shane had a, uh, it would, we'll, we'll kick this podcast off with a Shane story for everyone. So Shane's been on the podcast for quite some time. Since day one, had to go, you know, do uh, like things for the company and then come back to us and go back and forth. However, somebody works with his mother-in-law, future mother-in-law at uh, their place of work. Hmm. So why don't you tell the story, Shane? Yeah. So um, (laughs) I got a text from my fiance um, and she was like, hey, did my mom text you yet? And I said, no. Uh, Why? Why are you asking? And she goes, oh, well, so it turns out she uh, brought a case of the energy drinks in to the office for uh, her coworkers to try. And uh, w- one of the guys were like, oh, just just work energy. Like, I know those guys. And she goes, oh, really? Well, one of them's about to be my son-in-law. And uh, he, goes, he goes, oh, Shane. And she goes, yeah. He goes, hey, uh, tell him to go fuck himself. <laughs> And uh, I was like, man, that's a day one right there. Yeah, that is a day <laughs> he one looks or... dead nuts at his fucking future mother-in-law and says, tell him to go fuck himself. <laughs> so she comes back and says that to him. Yeah. So she never texted me. I, I heard it from Britt. Yeah. So I have yet to talk to her about that. Yeah. But it's funny as hell. Oh, my God. That's fucking great. That is beautiful. That She's is. like, OK, all right. I will. I'll go tell my son-in-law who just started this company to go fuck himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucking great. That has to be one of the greatest accomplishments of this entire podcast is the fact that Shane has built such a wonderful camaraderie with all of our listeners and followers for them to say, go fuck yourself in such an endearing, helpful, positive yes, way. I mean, such an empowering, uh, yeah. all love, empowering yeah. phrase. all love. Yeah. <laughs> then he's like, fuck Ohio, fuck Whataburger, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> But everybody, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the HWMF Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Frozier, here with my heterosexual light mate, Bob. What's up? And our esteemed distinguished gentleman, everyone loves to tell him to go fuck himself, Shane. Hello. Good morning. It has been intense around here. It's really good to get back to it. I'm excited. Yeah. We have a lot going on. You have a lot going on. You look a little light this morning, huh? Feeling very light this morning. A little morning. light. The neck is a little thinner. The jawline's a little more pronounced. Yeah. What do you got going on, There's huh? One... Maybe some heavy training. Yeah tons i mean it, it it's like clockwork like the last two or three weeks my weight just fucking you are two weeks out from iron man texas yes full distance iron man yes this is one of the ones that you put on the calendar it's a full distance meaning it's 2.4 mile swim yep 112 mile bike yes and then 26.2 mile run you got it yeah full distance full distance this bitch. this is your fourth full distance uh, this will be my third. Third full. I haven't. I didn't do any full distance last year, so it halves. I did all halves, Let's and see. this is <laughs> this is going to be. Uh, I'll remember very quickly how how much these hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, is the training that much more intense from a full from a half to a full? Yeah. So it, it's not as much as like the intensity and the pacing. Uh-huh. It's the duration. The duration. It's oh, like shit. it's an it's ten hours extra a week. On top oh of where fuck are you serious yeah like i hit i hit about 26 and a half hours last week that was like my peak week Bro. uh for the half i might hit 18 17 hours in a week um this week will end up being like 23 and then we'll taper into the race but um 
everything is like a little bit lighter as far as pacing and intensity goes, but that's uh, what's so intense about it is you're in that zone two fat burn all the time. So you are just expending calories like no other. You were saying that you are consuming so many carbohydrates during your training. It's bloating your stomach during the, during your bike ride. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the rule of thumb for most is like 80 to a hundred carbs and per hour per hour. And I'm on that high end, like 130 to 150 oh, bitch. per hour. Almost double and probably like, you know, probably about 80% more. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, and then you, you're mixing in all this sodium. And then I need X amount of ounces of actual fluid per hour. Just plain to water. Keep it. And yeah. it's, uh, it's such a game. I mean, I've, I've tried four or five different products over the last four months trying to find something that I could concentrate enough keep me fueled but then not be over flavored and like fucking up my gi so it's been it's been nuts but my my weight was was pretty consistent for this whole prep and now it's just dropping dropping like crazy um i ate probably two thousand calorie dinner last night oh bitch and uh woke up did my workout this morning and i was 181 um and i'm usually around 188 189 so Um, man so you are in the thick of it right now yeah in the thick of it yeah that's something that a lot of people even last night so uh uh guy sister nino Mm -hmm. nick walker and nick tragili and i are starting a podcast Mm -hmm. uh we did our first episode last night um and it's going to be a weekly occurrence or at least every every one to two weeks with the four of us on there going through everything and just talking shit having a good time but um, that was one thing they asked because they're like, dude, you're in great shape, da da da, because I'm doing the functional stuff. And the, the, I was fucking fl- so flush in the face because I took beta alanine last night <laughs> for my workout because yeah. I was like, I want to see if it helps with my with the functional training because that's actually the purpose of that ingredient. Right. So I was like, okay, well, dude, I was so fucking hot. I should not take any type of any ingredient or pre workout before one of those workouts. Mm-hmm. I should not. Yeah. It made my fucking face so flush red. It was insane. Anyway, for like, until I went to bed at like midnight last night, from <laughs> 5.45 to midnight, my face was red and I was fucking hot. Yeah. So anyways, um, but they asked, they're like, and Bob does those Iron Man things and you should train together. And I'm like, no. I was like, you guys don't fucking get it. And guys like, so what is an Iron Man? Is it just, you know, not for pussies like David Goggins stuff? <laughs> I'm like, what kind of guy? I was like, and I said, it. well, first it starts out a full distance is 2.4 mile swim. Then you do a 112 mile bike. And then you do a full marathon after you do all that shit. And he says, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, you don't. I'm like, yes, that's why they call it an Iron Man. And, and, and he's like, how long does that take him? I was like, well, if you're pretty good, like if you're good, not like a professional, like, I don't know, between like nine and a half and 10 hours, Mm -hmm. like 11 hours and you're pretty good. And he's like, no fucking way. (laughs) I'm like, yeah, dude. And he's like, but a marathon takes, like, if you run a three and a half hour marathon, you're a fucking animal. I'm like, yeah, they do that after all of that. And he's like, no, they don't. Like he was in complete and utter denial, never knew what it was, but was just like, no fucking way. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, dude. I was like, if you complete an Ironman, in under like in order to be an ironman you have to complete it in under 16 hours Mm -hmm. he's like that's more like it i'm like well yeah then there's professionals like we are in bodybuilding it's like then there's those guys and he's like holy fuck like it melted his mind yeah melted his mind dude it is it's it's a it's a monumental event i and it's insane and then you know all of a sudden it became like well how big is he how much does he weigh like all who, who does this and who does that like I'm like, dude, it's super expensive. And they're like, why is it so expensive? I'm like, the training, the equipment, the food. And then that was whenever, how much does he eat? And I'm like, bro, I was like, after big, after big uh, training sessions, I was like, I was like, in a day, Bob might consume 10,000 calories comfortably. Yeah. And they're like, comfortably? Yeah. Like, because there's all the 10,000 calorie challenges uh-huh. for bodybuilders. I'm like, I was like, Bob could eat two or three pizzas by himself and then go home and eat the rest of the food in his house. They're like, no fucking way. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> I was like, guys, I was like, we work out for an hour and a half a day with an hour of cardio and think it's a big deal. I was like, these guys train for fucking hours, four, five, six, seven hours a day. It's insane. Yeah. It was just so funny to watch. Like, I mean, I'm amazed, like, but I know you've been doing it for like three years now. So, but them, they were just fucking mind melted. Man, it's super like cool to hear that too, because I mean, when I'm like, I'm, I'm in it, I'm so like caught up in it that like, I, I, 
I don't even realize how how big of a deal like and an accomplishment it really is. And to hear dudes like that that I I admire for yeah. for the work that they've put in and for them just to blow their minds. I mean, oh. it's it's super cool. Well, I mean, I think that's why uh, you know we uh, have always said like just being a good motherfucker and appreciating what people do, like the hard work that they put into anything. Yeah. Like you could tell me that you shovel elephant shit and I'm like, so how much does it actually weigh? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like one of them big shovels that you would use for stone. Like how much does it weigh when you pick a full shovel load of shit up? Yeah. How many, like, I don't know. How many pounds a day are you moving? Yeah. What are you moving? Like you got to yeah. be in pretty good shape. Are you like a right, a left hand lead or a right hand lead? Or you got to switch throughout the day because <laughs> it's that heavy throughout the day. How many shovels do you move a day? Like, I don't know. I just find it fascinating when somebody's doing something with their job. I'd love to ask questions and see what they do because that's what they do every single fucking day of their lives. Mm -hmm. So they have to be relatively good at it. Right. You know what I mean? So I'd like to hear about it and go through it all. Yeah. But yeah, they, uh, it was, it was funny to watch them guy was just you know guy he's fucking east coast dickhead just fucking oh my god like couldn't yeah. believe it yeah yeah oh that's so cool yeah that's and then funny. fucking tragedy he is just it, like everybody's busting my balls because i'm i'm in really good shape i'm like this fucking dude's shredded he also his forehead doesn't move he's botox yeah and his shit uh-huh because he's like i'm getting fucking older i want to look good like he's just like, no shame he's like fuck you guys because i'm like look at me i'm like fucking forehead wrinkles crow's feet on my eyes my skin fucking like i have to use certain soaps because my skin's so sensitive and certain oils and things like that and watch my scalp and he's over here just fucking like glistening yeah in his light and sculpted like, bro he is fucking sculpted and we were busting his balls he's like my forehead doesn't move uh, he's like nothing like moving his eyebrows and there's no movement in his skin and i'm just like how the fuck He's like, I spend twenty five hundred dollars a month on this face, and I'm like, no, you fucking don't. He's like, oh yeah, and his teeth are pearly white, and I'm like, I need your teeth regimen. Like, he is, he just, yeah, he he puts work into it all. Yeah, it was a fucking riot of a conversation with those four. Oh, I can't wait to listen to it. Yeah, and Nick Walker is just a fucking meathead. Yeah, just so into it. Like, uh, I did. We didn't get into it, but uh, I would love to ask that man, like, because. Uh, Bob Chicarillo, like Nick took second at the Arnold. Mm -hmm. I thought he won. And it was a fucking hot topic all over the internet. Samson Duda beat Nick Walker. Mm -hmm. Samson has a fucking insane structure, just phenomenal, but he's lacking in a few areas, in my opinion, where Nick is not. I believe Nick is a more complete bodybuilder. I don't think that he is necessarily better structurally because mm -hmm. Nick is relatively ugly in the structure mm -hmm. area. However, I thought he was the better bodybuilder that day like i mean he was fucking primo crisp i thought he nailed every single aspect of bodybuilding on that day and samson was not good enough to beat him my opinion mm -hmm. but all the judges thought so and then bob chicarillo and nick made some videos talking about how like he thought it was wrong and then bob chicarillo the voice of bodybuilding came out and was saying some shit and they got into a pissing match because bob and nick don't like each other right. and like they're making youtube videos calling each other pieces of shit it's great you know good content yeah. but bob didn't really understand that bob was starting to take things a little personally mm -hmm. and bob didn't understand the way the internet works where you know this is how you're supposed to gain traction yeah. and use your name to build your platform and go that's how the internet works mm -hmm. um and, and nick was like he's like Bob, you shouldn't have went there because Nick has a fucking ridiculous amount of dirt on Bob Chicarillo. When I mean dirt, I mean actual messages, screenshots, like information of Bob doing piece of shit things mm. that he's not going to put out because Nick actually isn't a piece of shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's actually a decent guy, but everybody gives him all this information and the guy just collects shit. And I'm like, and Nick's, Nick's telling me, and I'm like, Nick. And he's like, I know. He's like, he's like, Bob goes too far. Fuck him. I'm like, I was like, I mean, he shouldn't do that. He, you know, he did these things and he knows, you know, these things and have this. Yeah. But um, I want to ask Nick, like his opinion about it all, because he has to be politically correct. Right. Nick has to be politically correct in the eye of all the fans and everything. But I think I think he, he said one thing that um, he thought he beat Samson or some shit and people get all excited. I'm like, but Nick is like on the cusp of being great. Mm hmm. So how can't you think a way of a champion? Like nobody ever scowls at Michael Jordan for being a fucking savage and saying fuck Isaiah Thomas and fuck Carl Malone and going after it in this. So why can't we do that? 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially someone in the thick of their career trying to be the absolute best bodybuilder, known as one of the best bodybuilders of today. You expect him to be like, I love the fact that I lost to Samson. It makes me feel good that I fucking drove myself into the ground and put all the, put this all on the line. But Samson, you're great. I suck. I took second. Like, no, fuck that shit. Yeah. Why can't you be boisterous and outspoken about who you are and what you want to achieve? Well, especially in a sport where it's fractional differences, I mean, you know, like less than a percent in this category size to to conditioning. It's so to, subjective. Yeah, that's there's not I mean. there's not points. You know what I mean? There's yeah. not points like oh, I'm shooting a basketball or catching a catching a touchdown or anything. It's so subjective, and it's like, um, I don't know. I just think it's. I just look at it, and I want to. I, I have a million questions to ask him about like how he felt and where his head is because in bodybuilding you're so fucking sauced out with all the hormones mm -hmm. that I know for a fact you go on a roller coaster of emotions yeah up and down because your hormones are going up and fucking down because you're injecting them into your body and you are not uh, uh you don't think as clearly as you do when you are on like a, a stable playing field mm -hmm. and I don't mean stable like high or stable low I mean stable like optimizing yeah and uh and you got to go through these roller coaster of emotions, which everybody doesn't think exist, or mm -hmm. like they do know, and they don't really care. Yeah, I mean, but, at, at any elite level, the the emotional side of it is yeah, dude, it's significant. Yeah, and and Trigili does a good job because he's just like he's he he doesn't care. Yeah, he'll say anything because he's but and he's he looks at things from a logical standpoint, but he's not going to stand for bullshit either. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, I have a lot of questions to ask Nick Walker about like uh. I can't wait to be able to get into it and ask him just about his career and where he is in a headspace because he doesn't speak very much about it. Yeah. He's very meathead esque mm -hmm. keeping to himself. But um to be at where he is, you gotta have uh you gotta be in a headspace that's super clear. And I think his girlfriend I, I, I hope his girlfriend, she seems to do a really good job of helping him keep his head on straight, which I believe is very important yeah. for uh for anyone, let alone somebody at an elite level of saying fuck everything else in life. I need to focus on bodybuilding to be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's going to be right because all three of those guys are from Jersey. So it's like <laughs> East Coast dickheads and me. And I explain what East Coast dickheads are to them. Nice. And I think they thought it was funny, but maybe not. <laughs> Or, or they, that's just how, that's just how they interpret it. You know Cause what I, I mean? was, like, I was like, I went to that, that, that deli with, with, uh, Vincenzo uh -huh. guy came fucking storming in and was like, I'll take 12 of this, 12 of this and 12 of this. And the lady's like, yeah, get right away. And I'm like, the guy didn't even say fucking please. Thank you. He just came in barking fucking orders. And she was like, yeah, I get up there and I'm like, yes, I would like a, uh, uh, can I have a bacon, egg and cheese bagel on what, um, egg everything bagel um and can i have and just looking at me like hurry the fuck up you slow half a retard yeah you should fucking know you, you should know and then and then <laughs> they started imitating all the people from the south yeah i'll take uh a diet coke please <laughs> like talking all slow and i'm like that's how you look at everything like fucking ridiculous then they were giving me shit about pumping gas in new jersey how they pump gas yeah. for you yeah they love it they love that they love it they think it's ridiculous that everybody doesn't pump gas. They're like, why wouldn't you have someone pumping gas for you? It creates jobs. And I'm like, guy, don't do that to me. <laughs> don't do that to me. He's like, he's like, what are you, against people getting jobs? <laughs> like, fucking asshole. She, I, she ain't like that one. <laughs> he just fucking dug in. I can't wait because I just can't wait to actually really piss him off one time. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be so much fun. But, uh, but yeah, uh, they love that shit. I didn't know. Yeah, I was like, oh, we don't like that. No, I, like, don't, I don't want anyone filling my tank up. Oh, no, they mm -hmm. were like, you should fill it. my tank up. Yeah. Apparently, the women out there fucking, they're like, because uh, uh, Trigili lives in Georgia now. And he's like, my wife does not even know how to operate a pump. Because <laughs> they lived in Jersey their whole life. Right, I guess that's a forever thing. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, every, so they moved down there, and he's like, I fill up the vehicles in my household. <laughs> I was like, man, this is awesome. Grown man, huh? Good job. Man, you what, to, a, what a whole different lifestyle. Do you have to tip them? Like uh, every single time? I don't know if you do, but... That's um, what I don't... Like, I wouldn't want someone pumping my gas just because I, I feel obligated. Yeah. You know? But again, then maybe it's like part of their thing where they're like, yeah, I should tip them. That It's their job. That's part of their culture. 
See, like I would want to tip them, but yeah, then, like I, I don't carry cash often. So then it's like, yeah, what do I do? Can I can I put it on the receipt? Like, is it is there a tip on my gas receipt now? That then you're just inconveniencing me. Now <laughs> I, it's I gotta taking, fucking get a pen and write shit down. I'm pumping my own gas way faster than someone else's. Yeah, I don't even get a receipt. Nick 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 was like, he's like the first time I was here in Georgia, I pulled up and sat there for like two minutes, <laughs> like waiting for the person to come over. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, and he's like, and then I realized I was fucking here in fucking Georgia. Well, the first I first time like I was old enough to go through Jersey uh-huh. and like that was a thing. I, I was like, oh no, no. I was like, I'll get it. Like you don't have and they're like, oh no, like we we have to pump your gas. I'm like, no, it's okay. What about busy time? How are you gonna pump gas when there's like fucking six cars at a station and you got one attendant or two attendants? Right. Like well, then I'm well, gonna get angry because well, then I'm in a hurry. Or they're jump. Shit. They're jumping around. They I've, are. I've seen mm. that at a busy gas station. Oh like, really? They'll Moving. Like, they'll start you, then they'll go back here, then they're over here. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Then you got to tip them because they're hustling. Right. I like people that hustle. And in theory, that might actually keep it moving faster because, like, like those uh, fucks you that can't just leave fu- their the, shit yeah. at the pump when and they then they go in. inside. I was gonna yeah. say that I fucking hate that. Shit. I mm. hate that too. Maybe them fucking. Maybe they're onto something. Yeah. Especially like if they're like. Like someone with a gas vehicle, like is at the fucking diesel. Oh, I don't like that. Bro, get the fuck out of the way. I have a problem with the gas drivers at the diesel pumps. Yeah, I do that sometimes. But whenever all the gas pumps are open, like if all the gas pumps are taken up, you're allowed to go to the gas diesel pump. I'm okay with that. Right. But if you just go to that diesel pump because it is the most convenient for you and the other ones are open, problem. Yep. Especially because they're placed on the end. For the bigger vehicles. For a bigger truck, yeah. easier to turn around. Or yep. Get, yeah. Yep. I have that, a bigger oh vehicle. Oh my God, that makes me so mad. I, have, I yeah. <sighs> I fucking love diesel. Really grinds my gears. Isn't it? Isn't it? Cars at diesel pumps. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there's not one person that drives a diesel that does not disagree. No. Every single person that has a diesel will say it. Shane, you get a diesel truck, you will see it and you'll be like, fucking assholes. Yep. Or if I even see like a box truck, like at a diesel pump, I know you're getting fucking regular, regular fuel. That really pisses me off. Or like a, just a regular uh, gas, like pickup. Mm. I'm like, motherfucker. You don't belong over here. You're in the wrong line. You don't belong here. here. Nope. Mm -mm. Nope. The truck's way stronger. Yeah, it is. I know they were, a guy was like, uh, they, they, he loves busting my, my balls. Yeah. He does. Yeah, for sure. It was a good time. But uh, that'll be up, and we got to find a name for us. So, everybody, if you're listening and you go and watch the podcast with Nick, Nick, Guy, and I, uh, you got to think of a name. It's a good name right there. Nick, Nick, Guy, and I. Nick, Nick, Guy, and I. Oh, my God. <laughs> what about East, East Coast Dickheads and Seth? <laughs> I, I, I thought of that. <laughs> I I love, I mean, it's so much fun to be able to have friends and have people that you can say these things to because you're not trying to be offensive. Like say something about me. Like I, I enjoy it. Like that's supposed to be part of the friendship, you know, to be able to say these things and, 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 and poke fun at their stereotypes and who they are so that you can have fun. Mm-hmm. Like otherwise, cause we're in such unique positions in our lives that we get to do this. Uh, we're super stressed with work. But we're in this unique position where we get to do something that we love and we're, yeah. we're doing something cool. So why not make sure that the people that are listening to this podcast be light free so that whenever whatever they're doing in their day, if they're having a rough day, like they're able to lighten up and listen to us and have fun and listen to people banter and bicker about things. Because whenever I'm having a rough day, I know I search for that. Yeah. And I don't find it very much. No. You know what I mean? There's not many people out there that are putting themselves out there to be like fuck offs. Mm hmm. Like, everybody's so serious about everything. And I'm like, calm down. Like, I'm serious. I'm intense. But you got to have some lightness to your life. You can be both. And, uh, the, yeah, I search for it, and I don't find very much of it. No, there's only, like, one or two, like, go-tos that I have. That, oh, really? Like, actually, like, lighten my day. Otherwise, like... <sighs> you want to say who they are? Well, they're they're just, like... It's not like an overly like you don't have to like be really in tune with with what I'm listening to. Like there's this triathlon podcast that I really hmm. like where all they do is answer fan questions. Oh, that's all they do. They'll have like a 10 minute segment, talk about their week and then it right into questions. That's great. And I love it because like it's it's everything from training to just life stuff. How do you manage 
being a professional triathlete and also having a day job and having a family and yeah but then just like fuckery stuff too like what's your favorite go-to snack after a big training session like, for triathletes that's massive yeah because it's such a niche group it is and like i can listen to it while i run it's not too serious if i miss a fucking question it's whatever like it's just good background noise absolutely you know, positive stuff yeah and it needs it needs that mm -hmm. yeah i know i uh i i have I've gotten into the kick of food. Yeah. Like, not even, like, me wanting to eat it, but just watching it get made, mm -hmm. it's kind of soothing to me. I watch it with Emmy and SJ now. Yeah. Like, whenever we watch, like, these people make these, you know, it's like two minutes of a baking thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I don't know, I, I really enjoy watching it, and I find myself going to it whenever I get into, like, a super high-stress time of my day or, like, whenever I need to calm down, I'll fl flick on Instagram and, just like scroll through and you know then i find the baking stuff and i'm like man it looks great yeah. emmy and sj would love to eat this with me this weekend <laughs> and then i'm like and it puts me in a better headspace it's crazy how quick it can happen like that yeah i like um i like that dude that like cooks in the wild oh yeah like, yeah he'll, like, he'll just pull up on like yep. a tree stump mm -hmm. and have like his cast iron thing and like he'll cut all his veggies and like, yep. it's like the asmr it's huge i love watching that dude isn't it crazy how the ASMR stuff is like, it was really, it is super fucking creepy. Some people take it way too far. Yeah. But then we will end up like, it, it's something that we're like, oh, I get it. This is real. Because now, like, I immediately could hear that fucking knife, his knife, hitting his cutting board. Yeah. Like, like the sound it makes, chopping veggies versus when he's cutting the steak at the end. And it's yep. that, like, that flop of a cut. Yep. Like... I, I don't know why I fucking love it, dude. But it, it's, it works. It's, it's a psychological cool. thing. There, there has is. to be studies done on ASMR, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. That we don't know about. But that, that I would just want to eat that dude's food. It looks so fucking cool. I, I'm on a big meat kick. Yeah. Like, I want to, like, Snake River Farms, great. Alpine Butcher, primo shit. Mm -hmm. Love those two, but I want more. Uh, Nebraska Bison mm. is where I've been ordering my red meat bison and elk from yeah um really great great price um if you go to nebraska bison tell them i sent you they're just they're a young family mm -hmm. doing it i don't get anything from it i just thought it was great because yeah. they reached out afterwards and said tell us what you think really cool yeah uh, i don't think it was a i don't think it was a fake uh instagram thing either it seemed way too real like yeah. the back and forth mm -hmm. but uh yeah really great really great meat from them i like bison a lot yeah big fan yeah, we we order bison and elk. Oh, really? Yeah, pretty frequently. Who you get it from? Um, that uh, it's like Jackson Hole. Oh, uh, out in Wyoming. Yeah, I, f I forget the exact cool name, but I forget how Kim stumbled upon it. But yeah. like, dude, I they're love it. They're ground meat. Love it. It's so fucking. Good. It's not even. I think because uh, ground beef is just fucking climbing. Everything's getting so expensive now. Yeah. It's insane, mm -hmm. but. Uh, yeah, I enjoy the bison. I eat elk once a week now because I just ordered. I ordered eight pounds of each, mm -hmm. and uh, I've been eating. I eat a pound of elk every week. It's kind of like a little treat for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've noticed that. So we did. The, I did the challenge with the bodybuilding stuff, mm -hmm. and then uh, now I'm doing the push pull legs with the functional training and back to the fifty percent vegan, other than eating five to six whole meals a day like a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. I feel way better. Yeah. Now. I look way better. You do look way better. Like I did that this morning. I posted that video. Like I was posing. I didn't do my cardio because last night I did a wild functional workout and I had to get my tooth fixed this morning. So no cardio. And I woke up and I'm like, I look better. I feel better. I recover better. Mm -hmm. I Everything I'm doing is better now. Doing push, pull, legs and functional training and eating like the, the well-balanced 50% vegan thing that I do. Yeah. I'm like, this is fucking insane that I was putting so much time and effort to a bro split with a bodybuilder lifestyle, okay, mm -hmm. which I was bigger. I was probably about eight pounds bigger, you know, because I'm like, I was 208.8 this morning. Mm -hmm. So I was like 215, 216 when I was doing the bodybuilding stuff, and I was super lean, and I was big and full, but I didn't feel like I feel now. Yeah, I feel way better. I never, ever in my entire life thought I would say this that this type of training is doing better for me than the bro split bodybuilder style of eating. Yeah. Two different goals. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? 
but I feel fucking way better. Yeah, I mean, it's like that. It's like that fine line. Well, tell me if like this is how you feel. Like with me, I mean, I know it's the calories are way different, but like when I'm when I'm just meeting like my break even or like slightly caloric deficit, mm-hmm. I just feel like I'm functioning way better. Like I'm lighter. My gut isn't feeling thick. Mm-hmm. And then like mentally, I feel like I'm sharper. Yes. Like when I overeat or like I'll refeed over the weekends, like after my big workouts, like I get like cloudy mentally. Mm-hmm. And I think it's like it literally my gut feeling slightly empty and like moving and processing food somehow makes my brain function better. Yes. That, that's a real thing. I think that we as Americans in our, like our whole society, mm-hmm. we are such extremists mm-hmm. that we go from extreme spectrums nonstop. Mm-hmm. I don't think the rest of the world operates that way. I think that's why they look as, at Americans as a little crazy. Like whenever we went to Australia, the way the food was way better. You know, before all this pandemic bullshit, let's let's try and eliminate that. Yeah. Like look at the way of life of these other countries. Mm-hmm. Like over in Europe, they don't eat like Americans do. They don't have the same processed food. It's not all the same. Australia, when we went there in 2019, we were like, dude, we don't have indigestion. We don't have belly aches. We're eating like different foods. Mm-hmm. Like we don't have any issues. It's the quality of food. Right. But I think here we are just such extremists, like you're doing Iron Man stuff. You can't do Iron Man stuff without without extremism. Mm-hmm. Bodybuilder, extremists, athletes, extremists. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and then we have all this science-based stuff sell, telling everybody how to how to do this and perform at the best. And it's like, I get it all. But if you're a regular person just trying to work out, feel better, look better, be functional, be the best person you can be and optimize, a well-balanced diet is the best thing. Like right on that cusp of, like you said, like being in that calorie deficit, yeah, losing weight, working out, gaining muscle, or being right there on the cusp and then having some higher days when you're in a calorie surplus and then some calorie deficit days, and you're teetering right on that line of back and forth. Not like big jumps. But ups and downs, like you're like, man, I really worked out hard this week. I had a really clean diet. I did drop some fat. Like I can see everything look different Mm -hmm. and then be like this weekend, I'm going to have, make sure I eat some higher calorie foods. And then they're fuller. They hold in a little more water, a little more fat over the next few days because they did that. And it's like, man, this is, I think that way of life is way better for me because that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. And like, I just, I recover better. I'm sleeping better. I'm like, fuck me, dude. It is true. So, like, I like I like the push pull legs and functional training. Mm-hmm. And you're right about running. Last night, when you remember yesterday, I was like, "Hey, can you teach me how to run?" Yeah. Because last year I was super functional. Mm-hmm. Uh, I liked it, and I'm getting back into it now because I want to be able to run. I want to be able to do some strength training and run five miles. Mm-hmm. So last night, yesterday, I was like, "Hey, can you teach me how to run?" Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know how like proper running form. Yeah. Because my knee is killing me. Mm-hmm. And you're like, you got to keep your feet under you. How do you keep your feet under you and still propel yourself forward? We got to start somewhere, but then you got to get the lean like you were saying and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. So last night, I, uh, <clears throat> I started the workout with a mile run mm-hmm. outside. I started with a mile run. And the whole time, I just kind of sl- slightly moved, le- leaned forward and just paced myself with my feet under me the yep. whole time. My knee really didn't hurt the whole time I ran. I'm like, fuck me. Dude, isn't it crazy? I don't know what I look like right now, yeah. but it can't matter. It doesn't matter. It can't matter. Everyone will have their own running form. It's literally what is just structurally working for, for you. It's it, like, I know, because once I started getting tired, like you said, I stopped. Mm-hmm. I walked for like a, 30 seconds to a minute yep. and then reset and started over. And Mark Bell, have you seen Mark Bell? Do you follow Mark? Uh, not lately. I mean, so yeah. I follow him and all he's doing is running like Mark Bell's doing like he, I think he ran a marathon. Oh shit. I didn't yeah. know that. He I looks like the it. most awkward motherfucker running. Yeah. But now I know why. Mm-hmm. Cause he's worked with all these people that are, that are professional runners or uh, whatever you want to call them trainers and this and that, that are the best at it. Mm-hmm. And they are definitely the ones who taught him to make sure he's keeping his feet under him yeah. as he runs like, uh, like he has special needs. Yeah. <laughs> And that's exactly how I run, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And I'm like, I get it because 
uh, whenever I was thought I was like looking like fucking Lance Armstrong or whoever the fuck runs, mm-hmm. I thought my feet were going good and then my knee would be killing me and I'm like limping. Nope, didn't do any of it last night. Yeah. And I also decided that every single functional workout is going to start with a mile run. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I, I think it's a good, I think it's a great thing to do. I think, I think you running... Even even say like you're getting after like a big like uh, deadlift day or even a big squat day, starting with a run, I think would have huge benefits. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, for really? sure. Really? Yep. I didn't like it at all. <laughs> I hated it. No, I hated it. I think it just stimulates so many, like it just recruits so many muscle fibers and muscle groups and fully warms your entire body up. Because, oh, dude. You know, how many times do you go into like a big leg day and you obviously warm up your legs like crazy doing curls extensions all of your shit but it's like how like your upper back your core yep. your everything yep. needs that yep. that that activation for you know? sure yeah. i know because i uh so the workout i did I, I i did the mile warm up and then after that i was like what am i gonna do and i was like okay so i just did four rounds i did uh mile run that was the warm-up and then i was like i'm gonna do 50 push-ups 50 sit-ups 20 pull-ups and then 20 dumbbell uh, snatches. Mm-hmm. I think that's what they're called, where you put it over, over your head. head. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, and then a quarter mile run mm-hmm. and do four rounds. Yeah. So I did that. And then the last one I did, the I just carried the 100-pound sandbag for a quarter mile lap as the last one. I was smoked. Oh, smoked. Dude, that's, that's where I would struggle. Yeah, it was time. hard. It was hard. But it was a good workout. But I think that those type of workouts, I don't know how many calories I burn during that type of workout versus a regular one. Mm -hmm. But I know today I am lighter, I am leaner, and I need to eat way more food. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that, like, if you're trying to get into better shape, I think that doing those functional workouts are key for for anybody to do. Dude, for sure. I think that, uh, like, like middle-aged men trying to stay in shape Mm -hmm. and going to the gym and just, like, eating and getting kind of thicker – thicker in the waist like you're getting more muscular but like i think they feel like shit Mm -hmm. i think doing functional workouts makes me it makes me feel like less shit and i think that more people need to do them like not crossfit fuck crossfit just do simple tasks putting them together and, and and work out and sweat well yeah for sure i mean everyone hates fucking cardio because they associate like my cardio with walking uphill on an incline on the treadmill for 45 minutes to an hour yeah, you're going to hate your life. It yeah. sucks. Being stagnant on an elliptical for 45 minutes to an hour sucks. Yes. So it's like horrible. so like you hate cardio because you're doing the wrong cardio. Like you're doing boring. It's a good point. You're making yourself hate it. So right. like you go do a functional workout, you put yourself through I mean me, like I'm like this sick like mathematic guy when when I do my training, I break everything down in like segments. Uh-huh. So then, like you, like you said, you do four or five exercises through four or five rounds. Like once you check one off, you're like, "Oh, I got four rounds left." Yeah. Then you got two. Oh, I got three left. Yeah, that's how I looked at it. And then you break it down in between, and now all of a sudden, an hour goes by, and you're done. Yeah. And it was hard as fuck, but now you feel way better than that consistent hour of cardio on the treadmill. This is the thing. That's what I mean. I feel way better doing normal people things now. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, my goal isn't to be huge. I just want to look good and I want to feel good and I want to look in the mirror and and feel good about myself. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, what am I going to do? I am noticing that this is better for me. I still do push pull legs. I'll still do a push workout. I'll still do a pull workout. I'll still train legs, but I don't need to do a full blown leg workout. Some weeks I'll just do a leg driven functional workout. Mm -hmm. That'll be great. You know what I mean? Like I can do these workouts at home with two dumbbells and a sandbag. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like people that are trying to do it or not have time, like get your kids involved. Just take your kids outside. Like now that it's getting nice out, I could literally do a driveway workout that is harder than anything I do here mm-hmm. and have two dumbbells and a sandbag, 25 yeah. pound dumbbell, a 50 pound dumbbell and a, say a hundred pound sandbag. Mm-hmm. I'll fucking rip myself apart. And and you can be with your kids. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking like from a standpoint of everybody out there listening, like I am pushing these functional workouts so hard because like it will make you it'll put you in better shape than you've ever been in mm-hmm. and you don't got to be a crossfitter you don't got to label it anything i have people the one guy was giving me shit he's like i don't find seth too fuckable i'm like like on my stories or on my 
my uh, Instagram. Yeah. He's like, I don't find Seth too fun- fuckable. And I'm like, bud, you know, you're not my type. Yeah. Like, you're, I'm not really going after for you to want to fuck me. I'm not a thirsty bitch. Yeah. Like, I don't need you to want to fuck me. I take my shirt off because it gets fucking views, dickhead. Yeah. Like, I work out with the shirt on until it's really hot out. And then I take my shirt off. I was like, but I take it off because those videos that I have a shirt off yeah. get way more views and pushed in the algorithm. Okay. So pay the fuck attention. I'm not trying to get you to want to fuck me. I don't even want other women to fuck me. I am saying fuckable for all of the men and women so that they look and say, I want my significant other to fuck me. Right. Because as you know, in in a relationship, you want to look good for your significant other. I'm not, I don't want to fuck any other women other than Hannah. I have a really great time with Hannah. And I want to make sure that I feel good about myself in the mirror when I look in the mirror and say, Hannah would want to fuck me. And she does the same. That's what. That's how a healthy relationship is supposed to work. And if you don't feel that way about your relationship, maybe you should become more fuckable for your significant other, you stupid motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's functional and fuckable for you, not the rest of the world. I don't have any desire for any other women to want me. I'm doing this because I'm a big meathead bodybuilder that is transitioning into a different way of life of still liking bodybuilding. I still do my push and pull and legs, but I need to be functional and fuckable for my significant other because I'm getting older and I have kids and I want to make sure that I'm functional with my son. Mm -hmm. I'm not out there (sighs) walking around the property, breathing all heavy. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go out there and split wood or cut the grass or do anything or play baseball with my son. And I can't even bend over because my lower back hurts because it's all swolled up from eating too many fucking D balls. No, I want to be functional. And then I want to be able to fuck Hannah like a porn star and not breathe on top of her with sweat dripping off my face because I just ate fucking three cups of white rice and 18 ounces of chicken going, <gasps> breathing all fucking heavy with Caribbean jerk on my fucking breath from trying to eat all the goddamn food. No, I want to be functional and fuckable for my life. Fuckable is an achievement. That's what I mean. Like, what the fuck is this dipshit thinking? It's not how I it's it's not how I want people to look at me. It's a personal achievement. Yes. And I yeah. think he's new. You know, yeah. he's new. He doesn't yeah. know. And I just like to pick on him. Yeah. But it's like that's the whole concept of functional and fuckable. It's not for anybody else. It's for my family. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> like I don't know about anybody else, but whenever you throw down with your significant other and you win, like you won. Yeah. Like you got her off before I got off. Mm-hmm. I won. That was that's a fucking crowning achievement. But she's also trying to get me. Like, that's her goal. And that is a wonderful thing. And I would like to make sure that I am in the best possible shape for that because you could fucking tell me anything throughout the day. But whenever I win a fucking throwdown match, man, I'm going to fucking, I am feathering my cap, ladies and gentlemen. I'm walking around like king shit. So, so it's really funny. I, I won last night. Yeah. But the funniest part about it is she was trying to win. Yeah. Yeah. In return, I won yeah. by actually not doing any of the work. Oh, fuck. You know what That's I mean? That's a big one. Dude, That's a like big she one. was trying to get me, which she did, yeah. but I got her way more and yeah. I didn't have to do any of the work. Yeah, yeah. It was that fucking fuck great. You were rock hard, weren't you? I was. Nice. Yeah. nice. <laughs> it was a good night. That's a, that's a big deal. And I mean, that's that whole fuckable thing. Like, I want to make sure that I am... Uh, I mean, that's like the whole MO of what we push for to be the best person you can be. And that means being a dad. That means being a significant other. That means being a porn star in the bedroom. Like I want to make sure that I'm doing the best I can for everything. I don't want to be, I don't want to be lax in any, in any areas here and there. You can be, you're not going to win them all, but you want to make sure you can be the best. Like, otherwise, what are you doing? Like, I don't want to go through life as a fucking, as a, as a deadbeat in any, any sense. I've already done some things I'm not proud of in my life. Mm-hmm. So there's yeah. so many like personal things that you can work extra hard at and get so much satisfaction from. Oh yeah. With, without having to go buy all the, like buy the shit, buy the happiness. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's what I feel like there's like a, this huge misconception of like what wealth and success looks like that it's always financially driven. And like, I mean, dude, we, we like money just as much as anyone else. Sure. But dude, like, being physically fit like there's nothing like that feeling no no No, there's not knowing like knowing your wife or or your husband appreciates you endlessly that dude that there's no better feeling it's um 
it's you know everybody defines success differently mm -hmm. and 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 what you think of yourself and it is hard because you get up and down like i should be like it's all like a money money and then you're like nope it's not and you're going back and forth i do at least yeah I and like too. you said but like whenever you have those moments with your family and your significant other it kind of slows down for a second you're like i need to work hard and i need to make money but I also need to make sure that I am just being the best person I can be in all aspects. I don't need to be so driven with, with all this. I need to slow down every now and then and make sure I am fucking my wife really hard. I need to make sure I am present for my kids. Yeah. I need to make sure I am like, like take it step by step. And there's going to be intense moments, you know, Black Fridays and busy seasons and releases. Mm -hmm. But it, 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 you also have to be able to settle, slow down and appreciate those things that don't cost any money. Right. That don't that, that are just moments in time mm -hmm. you know and uh yeah <laughs> it's a good time it is i don't uh for a minute there i remember probably it's probably probably a while ago it was when i was super stressed i was losing constantly and she she definitely knew she just loved every fucking second of me being like not 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 on top of my game and now i'm like yeah, yeah. i'm in such a better headspace now that uh like I'll, everything in my life's going really well yeah little intense Adeline tore her ACL so that sucks but that's probably that's the only one. that's like the only thing in my life right now that's causing some havoc yeah yeah which sucks dude your kid getting hurt just sucks so fucking bad you hate, you hate to see it man. oh it's not it's not fun because no. you can't do anything I cannot do anything you can't rush anything you can't pay extra to fix it faster you can't it's just it's the process that is all it is yep. and it is not fun nope I I mean I watched Kim do it three times yep and there's nothing pretty about it no nope. but dude it's just it's just time yeah That's all it is and I, my biggest thing is i just didn't want her getting into a bad headspace for sure you know what i mean kid getting into a bad headspace going through puberty 15 16 years old like you see it happen they start to think differently do things differently you never know what path they're going to take yeah and hannah and, uh, hannah you know made a really good point because i was freaking out there for a minute and she's like seth she's like look at how this happened she's like sure it's it's unfortunate but we were at states where she that's the most that's the hard part was like she was more than likely going to be win or take second at states mm -hmm. like she was killing it she her two hardest events she slaughtered so the next event was floor and we knew she was going to throw down and potentially win floor because that's her event and that's whenever she just under rotated and uh under rotated on a front full and uh her knee wasn't her knee was planted and she still was twisting a little bit mm -hmm. It popped, and then she tried again because she was like, I don't know, I'd like to try. And we're like, how bad is it? And she's like, I want to still do this. And we're like, we can't allow you unless you take another pass. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to to see if it, because she was walking on it. Right. So it might have only been slightly torn. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it wasn't there. And that's what that's what beats Hannah and I up. Yeah. Is it like, should we have allowed her to take that pass? Or should we have been like, no, but she was shaking it. And she's like, ah. Like I'm, I'm like, does it hurt or what are you, what are you, what are you feeling? And, and it's timed. Mm -hmm. You only have so much time. So we took, you know, 30 seconds to be like, Hey, like, how do you feel about it? She's like, well, it doesn't feel right. But you know, she's like, I think I can, I can compete because mm -hmm. it was nearing the end. And I'm like, Adeline, I was like, if you can't compete, then we're not going to do this. And you never know, like, cause kids in gymnastics, it's a sport built on perfection and injuries. Mm -hmm. No level nine gymnast or level 10 gymnast has never had any injuries yeah. they've all been fucked up yeah. more than likely most of them have had surgeries right. and they're fucking 15 to 18 years old mm -hmm. and uh and then we were like yep we we're like make the decision if you if you want to compete you need to take another pass to make sure and she's like okay so then she took another pass and just fucking went right to the ground yeah. went down and i think that's when it just blew out and it's yeah. like fuck yeah should we let her do it but then it's like if it was partially torn it was going to tear eventually. Right. What happens if it felt better the next day and she went and did something and it fucking exploded then? Yeah. Don't know what to do. Yeah. I'm, yeah. You can't. Can't live in can't, that world. Can't dwell on that. No. Uh -uh. So it's. Uh, but yeah, it's just unfortunate. But she's a tough kid. And, and Hannah does a really good job. She did a good job of being like, we could not have better people in our lives because we called Prisk immediately. I called him and he's like, yeah. He's like, come in. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll call you and we'll schedule something for Monday. And he's like, no, dude, come in tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And and we were still away. So then we came in on Sunday afternoon and he did all the x-rays and sonograms and scheduled the MRI on a fucking Sunday. Yeah. Just you can't ask for better people to be in our lives in this moment when something happens. So just it's it's great to have that. Yeah, for sure. You know, 
And uh, but yeah, it's the only thing that's really shitty. Yeah. Other than that, it's great. Had a great weekend in Denver. Went out there for one of the squats with Seth Tour. Yeah. Uh, fun. Yeah, we met a gay porn star, um, which was really fucking intense. Yeah. Yeah. Masculine Jason. Masculine, Masculine Jason, Jason is Masculine his name. Jason, yeah. yeah, he's big fan. Yeah. Big fan. He's apparently a huge deal. Huge deal. Uh in the gay uh in the gay uh OnlyFans world, he's a very big deal. Yeah. Yeah, he does insanely well for himself. Insanely well for himself. Hmm. Yeah. OnlyFans just for fans. He listed them all. Um, but yeah, it was quite the conversation we had. Let me tell you. Yeah. We've we Ben filmed some of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and Ben was fucking dying. Ben was dying. Like this guy's this Ben's like, he's like, he is in the uh porn industry. And he was telling us how he is adopted, listened to every single podcast multiple times, and he was telling how he adopted a lot of our uh, a lot of our ways of life that you and I have talked about for yeah. years now into his life and have and he's applied those to his life and his career and he has done nothing but flourish from them. And I'm like, so you adopted all of our principles and what we speak into your way of life and you've flourished from it. And he's like, absolutely. I'm like, this is wild. I never, I never imagined that occurring, but I'm proud of him. Good job. Yeah, I mean, there, there's not a wilder analogy, I think, on the planet. Not one. But proof that these principles can apply to just about anything. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it was the most wild conversation. And it was super interesting because it is such a fucking massive industry. The porn industry is massive. Yeah. And he was breaking it down for us and explaining. And I'm like whole it was mind melting mm -hmm. mind melting like i wish ben was in here because he was just ben was smoked he couldn't believe it he couldn't believe it I couldn't believe it but yeah he has hard working motherfucker tattooed on his head he's covered in tats dude. covered in tats and uh yeah he's he's 40 and he's been doing it for about seven years and i was like how'd you how'd you get into it and he's like my ex I'm like, oh, I was like, that's, I don't know how that happens, but okay. Yeah. Just, just, just decided to start. And, but uh, yeah, he, dude, he kills it. Also a massive Tom Brady fan. Massive Tom Brady fan. Like, I'd love to hear that. Dude, it, like, cause uh, the guys at the, at the, at Supplement Giant, Ryan and, uh, Ryan and Adam were telling me, they're like, oh, dude, loves your company, loves everything you stand for. And um, uh, he said that, and he's like, he's our number one customer for Axe and Sledge. I'm like really and they're like that's super cool every month every month and uh but then they were like yeah fun fact massive tom brady fan i'm like really and they're like he has memorabilia like the 12 of 12 stuff he has he has multiple items that cost tens of thousands of dollars just to that from tom brady dude like that shit's even hard to find yet alone pay, he pay finds it and then i'm like and that's whenever they were telling me about this i was like how much money does he make and they're like you can ask him <laughs> I was like, he makes a lot. And they're like, dude does very well for himself. Very well for himself. I'm like, he's hustling. Yeah. He's, it, it was really cool conversation, but it, it was, it was a little intense. Yeah. But I didn't know. So it's, I looked him up. Yeah. Kind of, I don't know how I felt about it. It was freaking me out a little bit, but he's in his shit and he's yeah. killing it. Gotta support him. Yeah. I, yeah. I feel like I, I, I should just make a request or something and yeah, kind of never, I don't know. It was intense. Yeah. I never watched anything like that in my entire life, and I don't plan on it again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> he was telling us about how erections are fake. I'm like, how's an erection fake? It's real. Look at it. He's like, well, there's stuff. You know, did you ever take a Viagra? And I'm like, yes, I have. Yeah. I was like, I felt like Tommy Lee. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like, well, he's like, that's actually like nothing. And I'm like, I don't think. I think my dick could have went through concrete. When I ate 50 mix of Viagra, I yeah. probably could have killed that wall. Yeah. And he's like, no, there's this stuff that you just fucking inject. And it just turns you into a fucking stone. He's like, do you ever wonder why everybody's hard in a gangbang? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know how. <laughs> I've never really yes. watched it, but I, I guess I don't know how. Yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah, dude. Just the craziest shit I've ever heard. My God. Like the craziest. And he's like, if you saw my DMs, you'd lose all faith in humanity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my god! I was like, I get some wild DMs. He's like, oh, they're nothing, dude. If you saw mine, you'd be. You'd I was be... gonna say mine are pretty basic, and I'm losing faith. Oh so no, just... dude! He was like, dude, <laughs> like if you saw it, and like he was just, he was a super nice guy, um, big dude too, like, and huge dick. Uh, 
<laughs> it's it's you look them up, it's well pronounced. Yeah. You see it. But uh it was a fucking riot. Really I had a, a and I had an absolute blast in in Denver. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. Um yeah. They had weed stores in Denver, which were really nice. Yeah. Um we went to a couple of them, brought some home. Nice. I got Gary Payton. Yeah. yeah one of my favorite strains really yeah i have yeah. some at the house yeah i got some yeah. i got i got a cut of it yeah. um i was gonna dab one at this weekend um got some edibles so get this ben is not affected by edibles i heard that yeah so apparently there's a small percentage of people that if you eat edibles like marijuana edibles uh -huh. they're synthesized through the liver some way like you have some type of whatever in your liver that it doesn't affect you like Ben said, his girl, they ate edibles, like the last time they did, she ate like a quarter of whatever, of the, of the piece, which they were eating. Uh -huh. She ate a quarter of it. He ate the other three quarters. Yeah. He looks over and she is fucking melted. Yeah. Like just smoked. And he's over there. Oh, well, this, is this good? Is this strong? Had like no effect. None. Yeah. Zero. So he just metabolizes the shit out of that. It must. We asked the guy at the at the store because he, he's like, oh, yeah, there's a small percentage of people that it does not affect. Yeah. Well, it affects me greatly. That's what I said. I am crippled. Oh. And I smoke every day. Yeah. He yeah. said that there's just, he the guy, it was, the guy looked like he didn't know shit behind the counter, just looked like some pothead. Yeah. No, he knew so much about weed. It was insane. Because he's a pothead. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. It was nuts. But yeah, I was just amazed that and Ben is not affected by them. So we bought some. Yeah. So I want to, I'm going to be like, I'm going to eat, I want to, I want to eat a piece and see how I'm affected yeah. and give it to Ben and see what happens. And Actually, I, that's a good, that, that would be a good test. I would love to see how my body metabolizes it versus him. Yeah. Yeah. He's, Ben is a character. Yeah. He is a fucking character. He is. He's very funny. Yeah. he's he's super witty with shit too oh, he's yeah. quick he's a fucking pittsburgher through and through yes he is 100 percent. he is a yinzer so hard it's not even funny yeah knows everything about sports especially pittsburgh sports yeah. um he gets stupid high on sativas before he works out every day mm. like i mean he is like <laughs> whacked on sativas and like like moving I'm like, so you go. And he's like, oh, dude, he's like, I'll fucking, he's like every day before I go train, because he does jujitsu and Muay Thai, yeah. every day before he goes, he goes home and burns one and then goes to class. And I'm like, you're, you're pretty baked up. And he's like, oh yeah. And he's like, and then like, you know, hour and a half workout. I'm like, Ben, you are fucking dripping sweat. And he's like, I love it. I'm like, you are a wild dude, cat. That's a big thing with, with some of these martial arts, right? Yeah. Like that, that A lot of people do that. Yeah. But I mean, I, you know, you. Dude, you smoke a heavy sativa, I'm out of my skin. Oh my god, I'm so paranoid. Yeah. I have panic attacks instantly. He looked for the he, he looked for the strongest sativa at the fucking store. Oh my god. Oh yeah, dude, he oh, got it. Fuck, I got some at the house that. Yeah, he had uh it was called me. Jet, I think it was called Jet something. I'm jet like fuel. Yes, yeah, so I think that's what it was. Oh yeah. And he's like, "Yeah, that's the one." I'm like, I was like, "I I want a bud. I want to try it." Yeah. Yeah, you gotta try it. Yeah, you gotta. So I was thinking, I can't put that on YouTube, but Nick's doing Patreon, mm -hmm. and I was thinking of starting a Patreon and doing some wild stuff like this, like explaining yeah. all these things that really get me in trouble on YouTube, mm -hmm. like uh, like my whole take ten I use a growth. I'm not gonna film it, but I'm gonna explain it on there so we don't get hammered because mm -hmm. we've had a few videos taken down and fucking I get emails but from YouTube every day now yeah. about shit they're taking down and demonetizing. But uh, I was thinking of starting it just explaining it, like I got. I got super high on sativa and worked out and just talk about it. Mm -hmm. Cause I think it's something people were curious about. Yeah. I think that's why I never liked sativa is because like I, I didn't have any like output. Yeah. Like I would just smoke it and then be on the couch and then I'd be like, <sighs> my heart's fucking. Tr -tr -tr -tr. Yeah. And like also recently I've been experiencing like if I get too high, uh -huh. like I have these extreme blood sugar crashes. Oh, really? And I don't know if it has to do with the weed and being high or if it's a combination of me being like slightly dehydrated mm. and like my shit just being off because mm. I'm training so intensely. But like, dude, I'm going to say at least one night a week, maybe two, I'll have a huge plummeting. Go hypo. Dude, it's scary. Last night I had it happen. Like we were about to sit down to have dinner and I'm in the kitchen and I'm like. <sighs> How long after your workout was it? Uh. About 45 minutes 
I used to feel hypo a lot when I died. And, yeah. Because I, I was I was hypoglycemic as a kid. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then, you know, my mom was like, oh, we, you know, she'd always keep, you know, mm-hmm. candies and shit on her in case I would. Because as a kid, my shit would just plummet. Yeah. And then it happens whenever I train, change my diet drastically. Mm-hmm. Hasn't happened, you know, in a while just because uh, I don't know why recently. But when I was dieting back in like 2009, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, it did a lot. It, I, I don't know if there is a correlation with being like hydration levels and getting there. Mm-hmm. But what I am noticing is it's it's after evening workouts that I am sweating like ridiculously. Yeah. And then like, then I'll smoke <clears throat> and like, I don't know if, if that's triggering it or, or intensifying it. There has to be, there or, has to be some type of reaction happening yeah. from it. Yeah, there has to be. Has to be. Because there's no way there's not because you're doing it. Right. right. Yeah. Just thinking like a right. simple minded person. Right. But like my go to, like I have to like we always have OJ in the house. Yeah. If if I it's, don't ha- there's nothing else that help, helps me rebound. And it's fast. Like even peanut butter and like, d- like peanut butter helps just blood sugar stabilize for long periods of time. Yeah. Like when people are dieting that like, that do do go hypo, they have yeah. it at nighttime. Yep. Keep their shit level. Yeah. Man, that's pretty crazy. It is. And then like it takes me a minute to like bounce back and then once I'm due, I'm like exhausted. So multiply that by ten. That's what happens when you take too much insulin and don't eat. Man, it's a scary, scary feeling. Multiply it like yeah. drastically. Yeah. And then like that's what happens if you don't play the relay right. Right. That's why insulin's so dangerous because it'll fucking put you out. Yeah. Because it's super intense. Yeah. yeah. I think I told you like a few months ago, like yeah. I had a very, very Yeah, bad, I remember. Like, dude, Kim was pacing the house like between, should I take you to the hospital or should I call a fucking ambulance right yeah. now? Yeah. We, we couldn't get it back to normal. Yeah, you, you, I remember when, whenever I was taking insulin and I'd go hypo, like not after taking it, but like throughout the day again because it fucking would plummet. Mm-hmm. And I remember eating fucking, I would be scooping jelly onto rice cakes, peanut butter and jelly rice cakes, and just housing them. Yeah. And, and, I'd be, and I'd be drinking apple juice yeah. with it. Mm-hmm. And I remember killing like a half a jar of peanut butter, whole jar of jelly, a sleeve of rice cakes, and a, and a half of 32 ounce, and probably like 16 to 20 ounces of apple juice, mm-hmm. like in a sitting just to get my shit level again. And what was crazy is, is I was a bodybuilder, so I was paying attention to my, my body fat. The next day I would wake up and I would be leaner. I'm like, oh boy, this yeah. is really scary. Yeah, You're really toying, and you know, I don't know the science behind it, but there is some type of science behind it. I don't know how, uh, how studied <laughs> that type of scenario would be, right. you know, being sauced out of your mind, taking insulin and things like that. But there definitely is a science behind that that probably is not too, uh, not too pretty. Right. But wild, the fact that I was able to, I would consume all of that mm-hmm. and then wake up the next day and I would be leaner. I'm like, this is nuts. And then I would gain muscle. Yeah. From that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, same, same thing with me. Like, it's a whole different scenario, but the same thing's happening to me right now. Yeah. Like, I, last night I had, I had my big, big bike workout. It was like an hour and a half. Then I had two burgers with buns. An entire bag of those Alexa fries, like yeah. a whole bag I ate. Um, then I had, like that, that was just dinner. Then I had two bowls of cereal, um, a big plate of like pretzels, crackers, and like chips with like a diet pop. Then I had a little bit of Ben and Jerry's, and then like four or five like Reese's peanut butter cup uh, Easter eggs. Bob, Bob, yeah. Bob. And, and before, after my workout last night, because I've been seeing how much fluid I'm losing during a workout, I was like 187. Then I ate all that food. Then this morning, I was 181. <sighs> so between my last that I ate, eight hours later, I lost That's fucking seven pounds. Wild. Yeah. That's wild. I know. That's, that's the, I mean, that's like, uh, again, that's an anomaly in itself. It like, is. I don't yeah. know. I wonder, I wonder if there's actually, I don't know. I don't really look up studies. Mm-hmm. That'd be something that I'd love to talk to somebody like Lane Norton. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. Like, you know, his his ass would come in here and have all kind of fucking scientific stuff to say. But he also, Lane does a good job because he is an asshole. And that's one of the reasons I like Lane. Yeah. Just because he's such a prick. Yeah. But, um, like, he also has, like, a logical look at things as well. Because he's done powerlifting and he's done bodybuilding. He's done all these things. So, like, he, like, I know he knows studies on this and would be able to explain it all. But, yeah. Yeah. Cause I'd lo- like the, like, how's that even possible? You're, you're talking like seven pound swing in a span of eight, eight hours. Yeah. Overnight, not expending anything, yeah, like but, not, not wasting anything. Like where did, where'd the weight go? And it's not just from your one workout, you know, it's from the consistency over the past fucking however long you've been training for right. this. Yeah. Yeah. Man, wild stuff. I, I love like experiencing it. Oh, it's so much fun. Yeah. That's what I mean. That's one of the reasons I love, like, just, I mean, that is exactly why I love taking 10 IUs of a brand new growth hormone. Mm -hmm. I just want to see what happens. Yeah. How do I feel? That's that dumb, crazy side of me that, like, I'm like, I don't know, but I just want to find out. Mm -hmm. This is the way I would like to find out. So I do. Is it, is it bad? Yes. But I want to find out. Mm -hmm. Like, I just find that more fascinating than anything. Mm -hmm. And I guess uh, right now, like, um, even with the functional workouts, I just like it because I'm figuring it out. Mm -hmm. Seeing what happens. Yeah. But... Yeah. yeah. From a from a company standpoint, everything's going pretty well. I'm excited. We got yeah. some pretty cool shit planned. We got everything planning out for the AAR release coming up on 420. Mm-hmm. Um, that'll be fun. And then uh, and then planning all the stuff for later on this fall with Axe and Sledge, Just Work Energy, new flavors coming out. Thank you all for the support. And if you uh, do not have it in your area, please make sure that you have your stores reach out to. Just Work Energy. How do they go there, Shane? Um, they can just do justworkenergy.com and fill out the wholesale thing. There you go. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Lots of fun. I'm enjoying it. I'm glad summer's here. Summer's coming at least. Yeah, I'm, the I'm la- excited. For the that. landscapers are coming to the house soon. Nice. Going to overhaul outside. I cannot do it myself. This guy sent me the fucking invoice. Or... or yeah, he sent me the invoice of everything that's going to be occurring at my house. Mm-hmm. The quote, I should say. Yeah. Fuck my life. Nothing is cheap now. No. Not one thing. <clears throat> Nothing. Nope. He sent it. I'm like, Whew. you can nope, you can't do this yourself, Seth. Because we're gonna we're gonna hydro seed about two acres of my property. Yeah. And then we got a sod inside the fence of where the pool is. Mm-hmm. And then there's just so much landscaping to be done mm-hmm. at my house like around the pool area and then everything that we demolished last year. And like, I was talking to him about, I'm like, Hey bro, I was like, for this fucking price, I was like, it needs to be pristine. And he's like, Seth, he's like, it is. Mm -hmm. He's like, don't worry. He's like, this is going to be something that is kicking my season off. And I want to make sure that we have pictures of it before and after, because you have so much space you're working with. We are overhauling your property. Man, that's exciting. I know. I felt really good. And I didn't know if it was a sales pitch or what it was, but it fucking worked. Yeah. Uh, But then he's like, hey, he's like, I know. He's like, I know this is a big number. He's like, but look at what you built. Mm -hmm. He's like, you can't not do this. He's like, if you do this, and he said half the price. Like, he's like, if you do this, I can do this. He's like, but I'm not putting my fucking name on it in pictures. I was like, really? And he's like, he's like, you can't. He's like, he's like, I get it, dude. He's like, I know, but this is what you need because of what you built. Yeah. And then I look and look at the size of my pool and look how much concrete and look at the 20 triaxles of fucking stonework at my house. Not allowed to go small. No. So I'm getting walloped on my fireplace, my pavilion and the landscape. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. I thought it was going to I feel like uh, I feel like that fucking that meme, that sound on the Internet. Like, uh, what is it where he's like, uh, like Elon was like, I thought it would cost half as much or whatever. You know that sound? No, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Oh. Damn it. What is it? But I literally thought the dollar amount that I'm spending, mm-hmm. I thought it would be half of what I'm spending. Yeah. Like, I thought it would be half. It's not. But at the same time, like, all the drawings and the sketches and the, the plant list on this fucking guy's, on this guy's shit is out of control. Yeah. I don't even know what they are. But it's, it's going to be really nice. Pool guys fucked me. They put so many places for planners. And like cool shit, yeah. like knowing because the pool guys haven't even come and take their pictures yet mm-hmm. because they're not taking their pictures until everything's done. Yeah. Because they finished in October. 
So right, everything's every, still like under construction looking. Like July is whenever my pavilion should be done. Nice. And everybody will come back and see the monstrosity that is built. July. Fuck. You don't be here like that. Oh, I know. It's already. But yeah, I'm I'm excited. That's something cool. It, it that's it's the one thing that you know I've uh, I had, don't really spend a lot of my money. You know, mm -hmm. I, this is the one thing I'm spending money on. Mm -hmm. So it'd be cool. I'm super excited. Yeah, I mean, ours is kind of already like put together. Yeah, like the house like just maintenance yeah, and you've refresh and all that good yeah. stuff. But I wanna I wanna get um, I wanna get a really solid garden put in place this year. Nice, like, I just do. I I'm I need to as well. I want to start prepping. Yep. And because like you got to start like I got to start getting things ready now. Yes. Because like I wanted to do it last year and then dude it was too fucking late. Yep. They say I think Mother's Day. Yeah. I think around Mother's Day you need to be prepared for it, which is the middle of May. Right. Which gives us time. Yeah, we're still good. We can do it together. I want to do a garden. Yeah. I want tomatoes and cucumbers. If I fuck everything else up and don't do it, I just want tomatoes and cucumbers. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I've watched my dad do it for my entire life. He doesn't ever plant anything other than peppers and tomatoes yeah like he'll do like 10 different types of peppers yeah dude it's super easy you yes. put them in the fucking ground you make sure they're watered make sure they're fenced off from the fucking animals and like you're good That's you it. can grow it anywhere yep so if i can at least do that i'd like some like some sort of lettuce like yeah. whether that's romaine or like arugula yep. or look at you arugula dude i love arugula i'm a big fan of arugula big fan um and then uh yeah tomatoes cucumbers peppers yeah. lettuce and then like i don't know something else yeah i want to uh, i want the same i like cucumbers mm -hmm. i love tomatoes and cucumbers with like uh like a vinaigrette dressing yeah like as a snack i like that mm -hmm. the other thing that my mom would make when we were kids like she would do this like little like it was like you could just spoon it out it was uh it was um chickpeas mm, yeah uh diced up red onions mm -hmm cucumbers and tomatoes yep. and then like a dressing like yep. an, an oil and uh vinegar dressing like a vinaigrette mm -hmm. dressing mixed in there and you could just take it out as like a light snack yeah loved it i love chickpeas really yeah big chickpea I fan put it on every salad no shit yeah yep man yep and then kim will um she'll roast them too like roasted chickpeas in the oven like with seasons and like so then i'll have like uh chicken rice my veggies and then like these roasted chickpeas and how do you what, what temperature uh oh i asked her probably like 350 on a baking sheet with some foil a little olive oil and then like whatever seasonings you want and then like they get this like crunch yeah but then they're still tender on yeah. the inside they're, dude they're so good i would like that i yeah. love chickpeas yeah she'll do like a balsamic sometime like a balsamic chicken with the chickpeas and yeah yeah i dig them yeah. i i'm that's that fifty percent vegan shit in me coming up. It is. I said it last night to the guys on the podcast. Yeah, and they were like, "What is that?" And I'm like, "Guys, it's nothing. It's me being a dickhead. <laughs> I eat chicken, veggies, fruit, yeah. meats, and then carbohydrates. I eat what you fucking eat. I just call it fifty percent vegan to be a jerk off. Yeah, like I love pissing people off just because they're that fucking stupid. It's so much fun. <laughs> you just classified a well balanced diet. It's all I'm doing. Yeah. It's all I'm doing with a salad. Like, oh, look, a salad. It's 50% vegan because there's lettuce and fucking meat. Yeah, I'm an asshole. <laughs> it's point. Like, ah. But, uh, yeah. I know I want to do a garden, too. I'd love to. Mm -hmm. Just got to tend it. Got to tend it. Man, you better watch the deer at your house and the fucking animals at my house. The goddamn groundhogs. That's what, that's what you've got to watch for, too. You got groundhogs. Dude, I need to take them out because like they're a problem. Oh yeah, I got a whole family up there. They're like under the the detached garage. Oh no shit, dude! I even keep back filling those holes with fucking stone. They dig it right out, bro. They are digging thick ass stone out. Really? Yeah. Probably gonna have to antifreeze them. Is that that's a thing? Yeah, fuck. We'll shoot them. Antifreeze, you put out antifreeze and then they'll fucking eat it and drink it and die. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Like idiots. Raccoons do the same thing because yeah. it's sweet. Yeah. Son of a bitch. You put it out and they'll fucking they'll go and die. Or you could just wait for them to come out and we'll get, 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 we should get infrared scopes and shoot them. Get Joel over there. <laughs> Move that apple cannon in position. <laughs> blow them away. Literally just blow them apart. With fiber. <laughs> That thing is cool. We it should is. fire that thing up. We should. It'd be a good time. I love that it's on a trailer. It's like mobile. Yeah. 
just drive around and shoot people with you just it. need a fucking 700 pound air compressor to run That's all it. you need <laughs> god damn it fuck yeah yeah i know i want to plant apple trees at the house too yeah i'd like cool. to yeah apple trees and pear trees i'm italian i also was debating about putting a like my you know remember dave he has a still okay to make moonshine huh? yeah he has one yeah he knows how to do it yeah so i have the crick at my house yep that's what you need so i was like man wouldn't it be cool if i set up like a fucking spot in the woods <laughs> to have the moonshine and make moonshine at my house yeah like out of the crick right there yeah so i'm like i'd love to have apple trees a still making yeah. moonshine and like the pool the firing range yep. the chickens the trampoline and the fucking playhouse for the kiddos i have a fully functioning Dude, late. sick operation you're laid out i know yeah i'm great i'm like i can make my own moonshine back here we could shoot guns we got the pool we got a pavilion we got a grill got a garden we've got a garden yep. i'm gonna all i need to do is put fucking solar panels on the house and the government can suck my fat dick <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm doing <laughs> they're like seth you're breaking every rule here and i'm like yeah i know Can we get a windmill fuck yeah let's do it yeah. one of those giant s fucking ones from the run. township will be like hey seth can you just calm down a little bit you no. can't you can't have a 300 foot fucking turbine on your fucking property <sighs> i love it that'd be funny as fuck uh, be good times yeah yeah i know i was thinking that i was like i could get the i could get the still at the house we could make moonshine make our own moonshine yeah you know there's fucking people out there doing it with us. Dude. It has to it's, be. It's everywhere. I'd be so excited, drink my own moonshine, grow my own garden. Yep. Fuck, I'll even cut my own hair and suck my own dick. <laughs> Swiss Army knife. Western PA's <laughs> finest. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, uh, good times. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that for sure. Yeah. I think I should. Is that illegal? I don't know. I don't know. No one talks about it anymore. I think it's kind of, you can just do whatever. Yeah. Hmm. I wouldn't mind growing a few plants too. Yeah. I haven't yeah. taken a stab at that since I lived in my mom's house. I know it's been a while. Yeah. I don't, what do they say? They say indoors better than outdoor, but it'd be fun just to grow it yourself. Yeah. You, you could definitely get some, some, some really nice seeds or some really yeah. nice, uh, even if it's some sucks, plants. I just want to do it one time. Yeah. 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 Watch them like some fucking phenomenal grower. I know. Yeah. Like it, it's like something ra like a rare. I mean, you're doing a garden. Throw it the fuck in there. Yeah, might as well. Yeah, get some hot. Just look at like uh, find really good soil. Read about soils. I guarantee you the same soil that grows really great tomatoes grows great weed. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Yep. Look at my peppers and my tomatoes and my weed. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that'd be really cool. Like garden. it'd be such a wholesome video too. <laughs> like I'm out there with my gardening gloves, like pruning some tomato trees, fucking huge giant six bush. foot bud. <laughs> be great. Getting rusted and shit. Fucking taking this twelve inch cucumber off, fucking twisting it off. Got a cucumber, your whole basket. Like you know, you, you go out there yeah. and garden. You and Kim. Kim has her fucking bucket hat on. Yep. Looking all cute and everything. <laughs> this would be great. Oh man! You have to get a permit to sell to grow weed. Right it's here? illegal. Oh. It's legal. No, it's illegal. With a permit? No, it's legal with a. Permit. Oh, with a permit? Yeah. Yeah, we got one. Oh shit! I have a permit for that. <laughs> this just says you could do whatever you want. I said it's because I can. I'm gonna make all my own permits. Dude, I might this... start like giving them out to people that need them too. Yeah. This permit's fucking ridiculous. Is it really, dude? Initial non-refundable ten grand. Ah. Oh. Then the permit, two hundred thousand. Ah, and then uh, you have to have proof of two million in capital for one plant. Yeah, otherwise it's a felony, <laughs> a year in prison, a five oh, grand fine. So we're not growing wheat, everyone. <laughs> I would never do such a thing, ever. I would never do that. <laughs> I, I, why would I ever make my own moonshine and grow wheat? I'd never do that. Who would do that? <laughs> Low lifes. You scumbags. Pieces of shit. I don't. I don't. I don't associate myself with those types. I of will people. never. Nope. Mm -mm. Disgusting. That is. That's horrendous to think that way. Why would people do that? I don't You're know. chancing your life. Mm -mm. Horrible. Despicable. 
Count me <laughs> out. Not doing it. No. Nope. I'm going to be a wholesome young gentleman, a fine, upstanding pillar of our community. Yep. I'm going to plant a cherry tree. You know what? George Washington did that. He did. He also cut that thing down. Yes, he did. Nope. He lied about it and then told the truth. That's what we're going to do. Yep. We told, we're lying. We're not. What are we? We're telling the truth. We're truthful yes, young men. We're honest. Not lying right now. No. Mm -mm. No. Nope. Not today. Not today, guys. Today, I'm telling the truth. Yep. Yeah, take notes on that, Shane. <laughs> Bob and Seth, Our... truth at hour 110. 122. <laughs> The truth we didn't lie. I cannot lie. <laughs> Everyone's like, "What the fuck are they?" This is so fucking. This is the fucking you. The, the we're in such. We're in such. This is why I live where the fuck I live. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> fuck off. I got work to do. <laughs> Safety always off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Think of how much fucked up illegal shit happens on a daily basis. Oh, it's a unique phone number. Probably trying to, I don't know what they're trying to do. I know, I gotta go take my truck for that fucking recall. Are you taking it? I don't know. My truck's fine. Seems fine to me. I don't know. What's the recall? Something important Heather said. Oh. Uh, yeah. I have about 17 recalls on mine right now. Nice. Yeah. I'm I'm literally about to trade my truck in for a 2016 low mile 2016 2500. If I could find my old my, my original Ram at 2017, bought, dude, that was yeah. the best truck I've you ever. You could probably track it down. Huh? You could probably track it down. I could. I'm 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 that's where I'm at with all these fucking recalls like dude, no bullshit, she has sent me at least 10 messages about recalls Same. and i'm like this is the most ridiculous bullshit in the world mm -hmm. like i want to find the 2016 the 2016 2500 and that's the truck i want yep. yeah i need to find a low mile 2016 like i'm not like i like nice shit i like expensive vehicles and they're cool to look at and everything but my life is so much like right now i don't have a goal of of, of like oh look at my fucking all this shit. I love owning these companies and growing the companies and creating opportunities for people because I'm getting way more fulfillment out of that mm -hmm. because my daily, my, my daily tasks consist more of people, gymnastics and the kids and everything we have going on here. And I'm like, I'm not that uh, obsessed with these materialistic things mm -hmm. because I have enough money to buy whatever I want. And then I did buy them and it didn't really do anything for me. I liked them. Mm -hmm. Like I like having nice things, but I'm not like, I'm not driven by, oh, I need to get this. Mm -hmm. Like Hannah has a nice Mercedes AMG. It's fucking great. That's a thing that her and I like taking out, but I love my trucks. And I have more of an obsession with 1986 fucking blazers mm -hmm. Then I do a brand new fucking decked out truck because I've already had all the decked out trucks. I had the coolest truck on the world, the TRXs. I had two of them, wrecked one, twisted the frame. The other one, I'm like, going to do the same. It, it wasn't, it's not like, I didn't grow up like fantasizing about them. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm like all these things, like doing the things with the kids in the gymnastics and the success they're having there and like, uh, and everything we have here with growing the company and getting more people and employing people. We have over 50 fucking employees with all these companies. Dude, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. I like it and watching people grow uh, as people. So, like, uh, do I like nice shit? Absolutely, you know? Mm -hmm. But, like, I don't want to be inconvenienced with all these fucking new age cars and all the bullshit going on with them. I'd rather just not have any issues. Dude, like, that's where I'm at. The, it's the fucking ridiculous. The reliability to me is because of the lack of time. Like, yeah. dude, I literally... What am I taking my fucking truck for this shit? Bro, that's what I mean. I'm not taking where I fucking bought it no. because they don't do fucking shit. They there. suck a fat one. They suck, dude. They're horrible. They're awful. So yeah. I'll go to our good pals up at uh up at what's it called? We got our tires from. Oh yeah. Uh um what's it called? God damn it. Choice. 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 Yeah. Dude, they're I, I feel yeah. like they can look into all that and yeah, but I'm it's just it's wild. That's why I'm like, I'd rather find that fucking 2016 that had no issues or dude, my after I deleted that truck, 
that truck was the coolest fucking truck on the road. Why do you think that fucking thing sounded so cool? Seven threes and five nines are still yeah. like the most sought after engine. That's yeah. insane. It's like seven hundred horsepower. That was awesome. Fucking woke up the neighbors. I love that. Yeah. I was actually thinking about that with Kim, like when I moved into your old house yeah. when we first moved out yeah. here. Cold starting that bitch at awesome. fucking five thirty in the morning it's every awesome. day. Actually, you know what? I just made my mind up. That's what I'm looking for. I'm going to trade my truck in and get one of them yeah. and delete the bitch. Because anything after 2018, any Ram after 2018, I believe is a pain in the fucking dick to tune, delete yeah. and tune. Mm -hmm. I think the 2016s. I like the front end of the 2016s better anyway. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I got to find like, yeah, I got to find it. I'm gonna hunt them down. Yeah. I don't know. It's that thing. I, I, it's... I, uh, uh, as a, going through all these different uh, things as, as business owners mm -hmm. and, and having success from a financial standpoint and everything going so well, I like, what are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do with your money? Like, how is it supposed to work? Like people are like, oh, if I had a million dollars, I would do this. And whenever we're put in that scenario, like we're just creating more companies and creating more opportunities for more people. And I am finding so much more fulfillment in that than I am anything, because I'm just a simple guy. Like, I'm going to drive a truck whether I have $10 million or $100 million. I'm driving a truck. Mm -hmm. That's just what I'm driving. Yep. I like them. I feel comfortable in it, because anything that I have is too fast, I end up doing dumb shit and jeopardize my abilities in life, because I'm an asshole. So I don't. Like, mm -hmm. <clears throat> like I drive a dually because I like it. You know what I mean? Like, like I have the dually that I work around the house. I didn't need to buy a dually to do it. I just did it because I could. And that's like, that's where it is. So yeah, you have to have some money to do that. But um, yeah, I'll drive a truck no matter what. Mm -hmm. No matter what. No, I mean, I didn't grow up a truck guy, but it, it's such a, dude, I got, I got shit delivered here yesterday that if I didn't have a fucking truck, how the fuck am I getting it from here up to my house? You're not. I, I, I don't. I don't you care buy if it mind. gets dirty. You can literally fucking hose out the fucking thing yeah, and then everything cool. is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Truck guy. Like that. Yep. I think that's the other thing. The one thing that I will get, I can't get it yet because I, that's like it, the, the, the super luxury item would be the old school vehicle. Mm -hmm. And I know we've talked about it on here multiple times, but that's uh, the, the luxury item that I would get would probably be like a pristine, like, 1980s blazer mm -hmm. or like a, like an old like a 69 mustang mm -hmm. fastback yeah but if i got that i don't have anywhere to put it and sj right now is absolutely terrifying he is fucking everything up in our house yeah. he is insane uh so if i came home and he like drew chalk on like this new vehicle or even just drew chalk on the tires i'd be like i just spent a lot of money that that's not really getting me anything <laughs> right, right. it's just 100 percent luxury yeah and he's gonna screw it up yeah i'd, I'd have a really hard time with it but yeah. uh so yesterday uh sj um sj's wild dude yeah he is. he's super strong he is um very fast he's super athletic really coordinated um and he is getting wilder by the day okay yesterday hannah said that uh she's like because he's in the classes in gymnastics mm -hmm. you know because he's two and a half mm -hmm. And all the people in MMA, karate, all these other people said, wait till he's four mm -hmm. to put him in anything. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, he's over in gymnastic and he just fucking runs. Like he grew up in the gym. Mm -hmm. He, she's like, he can't be in these classes anymore, but he loves it. And I'm like, well, what happened? And she's like, he was tackling the other kids, like hurting <laughs> them. I'm like, what do you mean, babe? She's like, he can't be in any classes with girls. Like, because he likes girls. Like, he comes over and gives them hugs and likes them. But then, like, once he gets warmed up to them, he comes and, like, grabs them, picks them up, tackles them. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? And she's like, yesterday he tackled a six-year-old boy and was, like, holding him on the ground because he wanted to wrestle him. So he wrestled the six-year-old to the ground and was grounding and pounding him because we do ground and pound at home. Yeah. She's like, he was laughing and carrying on, and he was pinning this kid down. And I'm like, no fucking way. And she's like, Seth. He's no longer allowed in the classes. I can't bring him here anymore. And I'm like, oh my God, we own the gym. And she's like, it's she's our like, son. She's like, we can't, con she's like, I can't control him because he's so excited about it. And he's not, it's not being mean. Yeah. He's laughing because that's what he and I do at home. And I'm like, okay, like maybe, I, like, did I do the wrong thing on teaching him all this stuff? But I got to call up, I'm going to call up Philip Amaris yeah. and the guys at the MMA course at the classes and be like, hey, can we work him into something in the kids? And like, 
I guess kind of, I don't care if he gets beat up, like let him get beat up. Cause yeah. this kid is, she's like, it was so intense that it was making the other parents super uncomfortable. And I'm like, okay, no yeah. more classes for SJ. Yeah, that room it is. Yes. Has to be. Yeah. She says he, cause he comes home and he likes wrestling Emmy mm -hmm. and Emmy's so sweet. She's not physical at all. And he'll take Emmy down. Like he'll chop her legs out from under her. <laughs> it's the wildest thing in the and I mean, I guess I'm responsible because I was I do it to him. Yeah, like we have fun. Like we'll put the pillows in the in the room and just fucking take each other down. He he has like a grown man persona. Like when when you guys come walking down the hallway and he like comes through my door frame and he's just like, I'm like that. That's what a grown man would do. Like, hey, how's it going? Hey, Bob. Hey. He he. It kids are sponges and uh, girls are different than boys hundred percent that child is not like yeah. addy and emmy were. seeing all three of your kids grow up yeah you've seen them all it is as far opposite as you can think yes yeah i have barely emmy is a very girly girl yep she's a very active girl mm -hmm. he is a boy through and through and it is so di i thought i knew so much about children with my two girls boys are different mm -hmm. if you have all boys you don't know girls and if you have all girls you don't know boys yep Having them both, it is fucking insane. This kid is, and he follows me around. Hannah's like, you know, anytime we see a white truck, it's dad. And like, he's so excited and always, and always excited for me to be around. So like, she's like, dude, he is just always on you. And I'm like, Whew. he's also a repeater. I stopped swearing around him. Cause he went into Emmy's room or Addie's room whenever Emmy was in there and Addie's boyfriend was in there and goes, and he goes, hey fuckers. And I'm like, oh. No. Yep. So no more swearing around that's, SJ. That's pretty funny. Actually. It, it's absolutely hilarious. And uh, he this when you see SJ do one finger that Addy taught him whipping people off, and he didn't know it's middle because he doesn't have the the dexterity to do so. So it's yeah, yeah. He'll walk he'll Fuck walk you. into a room and go yeah. like with the straight face. That's Addy. <laughs> That's having, that's fucking. Funny. It is the funniest thing in the world because yeah. Addie does it. Because again, Addie is my child. Yeah. So instead of swearing, Addie never repeated a swear word. It was always just she was always aware. Yeah. But me, me and the middle finger is a thing. Mm -hmm. Addie and middle finger is a thing. So she taught SJ. Yeah. He'll come around the corner. He'll come around the corner like at night after he gets a bath. Mm -hmm. He's all fired up after a bath, so he's fucking dicks out naked what running does around. What happen? <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? Oh, too? dude! Like like bath time, fired the fuck up. Oh, dude! Refresh. After fresh. After we eat, and then he gets a bath, and he gets out of that tub, dude. He does not want any clothes on. He wants to run around the house, and he'll peek around the corner, give you the finger, run back into Addie's room, come back out, and try and tackle tackle you, dude. It is a riot. Boys are different. They are different. Put your dick away. <laughs> Dude, he, so he's peeing on the potty, you know what I mean? So he's got a step stool and he's like aiming his dick in the toilet and everything. Yeah. Uh -huh. So like, it's nice out. So we've been peeing on items, target practice. Yeah. So you go out and be like, hey, you know, pee on this, pee on this rock, pee on that. So he can aim with it. Uh -huh. Well, when you do that, you're teaching him to aim with his dick. Uh -huh. So now when he comes in the house after the bath and after his bath, he he's he aims his dick at you. Like he's I'm peeing on your foot. <laughs> he won't pee, but he's like pointing it at your foot. I'm like, oh my God, this is just it's so much. It's it just, is just taking it so literal. Oh, it's so yeah. much fun. It is an absolute blast. But it is a lot of work. Like oh these are the glorious things of being a parent, like all these wonderful things. But it is a lot of work. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's intense. It's awesome. It's awesome. Well. Really great time here. That was very fun. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure we do it every week. Yeah. Everybody, thank you for all of the support. Um, make sure that you comment in the video. Make sure you share it. Make sure you tell us about your favorite part. And we'll make sure that we keep doing it. Other than that, keep being good motherfuckers and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.